Wall Productions present Star Trek Grissom Episode 4 One Moment of Humanity this human club even survive? Exploration ships, barely armed, being sent into uncharted space. Ha! Their military leaders must be fools. Or idiots. Or cowards. They fear a lucky shot at the right time, just like tiny girls who are afraid of the ball. Watch your tongue, Navi. Lady Valkyrs. Milady. How can we serve you? I believe you are presently fine with the quarters you were given. I pay no heed to a dozen testosterone-emitting males around me. It is a pleasant diversion from the air on your ship. That stinks, Arsh Tark. <laughs> Don't make me tire of you, worm. I will do my best, milady. Commander! The sensors detect another warp signature in our vicinity, within 1,000 kilometers of our current position. What? It's paralleling our course and speed. Is our cloak intact? Are we emitting ionizing vapors? Negative, Commander. We are assigned as the monks of Boreth. However, the trajectory of the other ship has not changed. Shall array shields? Maintain course. We don't want to drop our cloak right now. Commander, the vessel changes its course again. It is... Romulans. <laughs> shields. Keep the shields up. Get us out of here! We have escaped, Commander. No pursuit. By Kalis' beard? What are the Romulans doing in Federation space? Catching you, as the humans would say. With your trousers down. You run from battle, Commander. You dishonor your men, your vessel, and your house. Do not speak to me of honor. If we had stayed then, they would have destroyed us, and our mission for the Empire would be over. My mission, Rashtak, which you are jeopardizing already. Now we have the added complication of the cursed Romulans knowing we are active in the Federation space. Enough! I would kill you here and now for that insult, Witch. If your importance to General Card did not outweigh my own desire for your punishment, be careful you do not outlive your usefulness. <laughs> you wish. Men like you tend to wake up one day and find they are already dead. And this is basically it in a nutshell. I'm delighted to hand the position of science officer over to you, Lieutenant Savick. Thank you, Commander Chapman. Well, it's Lieutenant Commander still. I just hope you find everything in order. I think your explanation of your work was very circumlocuitous, but I have understood the message you were trying to impact. Ah, uh, right. 
I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I didn't mean to drone on. I shall assume my station then, Lieutenant Commander, if you'll excuse me. <sighs> Calling it a night, Lieutenant Commander? Not just yet, Bakery. I think I'll stop off in the mess for a nightcap. If you'd like to join me, Dr. Marcus. Sure, Jackman. Sounds good. Jata, you have the bridge. And you guys have one for me. Right, are we ready? You have to ignore her. She was just being... Vulcan. I don't know. I, for one, found her briefing to be very clear. I guess Savak's still unhappy that she's been assigned to share her quarters with Lieutenant Sato. Curious. I would have thought it'd be you who should be unhappy about that. <laughs> That's quite personal, Chapman. I didn't expect a comment like that. Apologies. Grissom's a small ship, you know. It's a bit of a lottery as to who you'll end up with these days. Like you and Petty Officer Jata, for example. Oh, don't worry about that. Jata's okay. I heard for this mission even you are sharing quarters. It's that Dalton boy who's in sick bay, right? That's correct. Is he recovering well? He's improving daily, Doctor. But thank you for asking. Sorry for being nosy. I heard you two are... together, so... No, we haven't been. And we aren't. At least not yet. Sorry. Don't be. So here we are, Doctor. The mess hall. What's your poison? David, Chapman, come and join us. Clive, it's after midnight. Oh, Davy, babe, you don't know how funny that sounds from you. Now sit down. Just like the old times, me and you drinking and playing cards while your mum ran it at us for time wasting. I think I did the car playing while you did most of the drinking, Clive. Lieutenant Sato, good to see you. Dr. Marcus. Rebecca. Christopher. I hope Lieutenant Savick isn't proving too much of an inconvenience to you, sharing your quarters. Not at all. I'm finding her presence to be most calming, actually. My sweet Becky. <clears throat> so, Rebecca, tell us. How will Robert take the news of your pregnancy? I'll bet he will be delighted. Christopher, I haven't told the captain yet, but I see my condition is already becoming universal news, thanks to you. Gerber stopped me today to ask me when is the happy event. Which of you guys is talking? Well? I think the thing is, Lieutenant, that you're quite starting to show, as they say. Sorry, but that's absolutely true. Let's face it, sweetheart. Those uniforms you wear accentuate your curves in all the wrong places. So any weight gain is blatantly obvious. Well, thank you for your rudeness. Do you have to be so personal? Hey, I complained about the uniforms, not your curves, baby. <laughs> oh, you bastard. You're incredible, Saunders. Half of the female crew is in love with you, and you just love it. <laughs> Probably half the male crew, too, if I'm not being too vain, eh? Oh, dear. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, my bad victims. Night tonight, Becky. And for the record, since you asked, Christopher, I'm sure Robert will be delighted. I can't wait to see my wonderful husband again. No doubts about that. And not another word about my condition. I'll be meeting Captain Esteban in the morning to discuss this with him. But only because I want him to hear it from me, and not from anyone else. Well, Saunders, here we are. Thanks for bringing him, Chapman. What? Well, Davy, Chapman and I have had lots of time lately, maybe too much, to go through the horrendous amount of data from your mother's data tape. And we thought, we've got to talk to you about something we'd like to ask, before Savak or Lehman do when they find out. Ask me? About what? About the very nature of the Genesis device. Murphy, you're burning the midnight oil, aren't you? I thought you had an assignation planned with Instant Gerber for this evening. Christ, is that the time already? I noted that Ensign Wood has managed to miss two of her scheduled physicals. I'll have to get her in here shortly. Nobody can ever slip through your net. I would say you are as tight as a Tholian web, but given the death of Instant Delonge, it's really poor taste. For a science fest, we've had such heavy losses lately. Hewson, Zolak, DeLonghi. Well, how is our patient doing then? He seemed much improved this morning. Aben is much better. He's alert now, since you woke him from the induced coma. 
He'd been asking for Chapman. Surprise, surprise. But apart from that, just resting. I'll go take a look at our young friend. Why don't you go get Gerber and go enjoy yourself? <laughs> On this ship. Good night, Murphy. Well then, good night, Findy. Aben, you look much better. Doctor, it's good to see you. I am feeling much stronger. How long must I stay here? Just a short while longer, specialist. Another day or two should suffice. Your thoracic wound was worsened by the crystalline nature of the Tholian weapon. It wasn't a clean wound so much as an explosion internally. How did that happen? I'm afraid I can't tell since I wasn't there. But you're lucky to be alive, my young friend. Doctor, tell me. I have been asking for Christopher. I mean Lieutenant Commander Chapman. But he has not come. Do you think he hates me now? Aben, for the last two days, Christopher Chapman has been glued to your side like a limpet. The only reason he is not here now is because Murphy threatened to throw him out. Really? Thank you, Doctor. I am relieved. I feel great joy. And gratitude. Full sweep complete, Mr. Jata, and processing. Thank you, Lieutenant. I am detecting two ships, one civilian freighter and one. Sir, sensors confirm one Orion privateer, an older model. It is firing on the freighter. Ray shields. Khan, plot a pursuit course. Jata to Esteban, we have a situation which requires you immediately, sir. On my way. Childers, get the senior staff up. Hailing them. Is it not the captain's decision to order pursuit courses of unknown vessels? You said there's a civilian ship involved. No time to waste. Captain on the bridge. Status, Mr. Jada. Senior crew already on their way to the bridge, sir. We have detected an Orion privateer pursuing a civilian freighter in the vicinity of nearby KwaZulu-8. We are in pursuit of both ships. Lieutenant Savick, what is the status of the civilian ship? The freighter appears to be a modified vessel with enhanced shielding, but currently her shields are down to 15%. Yellow alert. Plot and intercept course. Lock phaser banks to repair photon torpedo spread. Main powder shields. Aye, sir. I can put us directly behind the Orion vessel. Negative that. Put us directly between the privateer and the freighter. Ooh. Lieutenant Sato reporting for duty, sir. Take the helm, Lieutenant. We're on to something. Increase speed to warp factor 4. Aye. Sav, prepare to extend our shields around that freighter. Childers, hail the freighter and advise them of our plan. Acknowledged. And send an encrypted message to Admiral Morrow at Starfleet Command. We need to update them on our SID rep. Aye, sir. Should we not also hail the Orions? The freighter's shields are down. She is vulnerable to the Orion attack. We're now between both ships. All engines stop. Well done, Sato. Brace for impact. Shields holding. Contact the Orions now. Sir, the freighter is caught in the atmospheric gravity of KwaZulu-8. It is inevitable. She is going to crash. The Orion vessel is retreating. We have to assist the freighter first. Seven, lock onto it with a tractor beam. The vessel is already in the upper atmosphere, sir. Tractor beam is not an option. Then track the freighter's descent. Sato, get us into orbit. On it. Bridge to engineering. Captain, what the hell is going on out there? I'll explain later, Commander Otair. How are we holding up? Despite our sudden race and the Orion's disruptors, we're fine. Shields are at 75% and should be recharged soon. I have ordered repair crews to check all decks. Thank you, Commander. Assemble a landing party to meet me in transporter room one. This mission is yours.
Commander Pardek, the Grissom gives no chase. I can see them fading on screen myself, Subcommander. Of course, sir. Get us out of their sensor range. Yes, sir. You know, Maori, it is important that our agents are allowed to carry out this portion of the mission alone. Your plan is simplistic but straightforward. I beg your pardon? There's nothing simple about a strategic approach, Subcommander. No offense was meant, Commander. I merely wanted to praise your straightforward thinking. Listen, no offense was taken, my friend. Forgive the agitation. Now, the bridge and this decoy vessel are yours. I will return to our warbird, which is still waiting cloaked in the system. Keep me informed and call me the moment we hear from our agents. As you wish, Commander. You should have known this planet is entirely snow and ice bound. No indigenous species known, and not due for further survey for a considerable time yet. I guess you studied the survey which was carried out by the Lexington some time ago. Negative. I included it in your briefing, Chapman, and you should have read it. Any contact with the freighter? Thorson? Not yet, Commander, but according to Lieutenant Sadik, the ship must have made a fairly decent crash landing. I anticipate there will be survivors. This way. Chapman, give me what you have on the freighter. The freighter is a Dublin-class ship, designed in the late 22nd century by the firm of McKenna and Ireland. The design language in the McKenna and Starfleet databases for two decades or so, until resurrected by an up-and-coming engineer named Michael Finnegan. Chapman, can you just avoid the history lesson and tell us some specifics, please? Yes, Commander. Sorry. The vessel is an unusual design in its offset bridge and crew areas and a large cargo capacity for its small size and features a system based partly off the bulk and separable drive section using the long range shuttles. This is so bracing! It reminds me of the ice fields back home in Endoria in the summer. I would give my right arm for a cup of hot tea. Commander, my tricorder is picking up eight life forms ahead, all humanoid. Slowly then. Hands on your phasers, just in case. I don't like any kind of surprises in situations like this. the ship's ventral surface. That's it, sir. Thank you, Chadman, for that most comprehensive report. If I ever run out of sedatives, Chadman, consider yourself drafted for sick bay. Starfleet, thank you for coming to our assistance. We hoped you might. I am Sharon Colgan from Pacifica, first mate of the freighter Persephone. I am Commander Stephanie Auter of the USS Grissom. We plan to be of assistance. But why were the Orions pursuing you from within Federation borders? My dear Commander, Otto, was it? I can answer your questions and more, but please, come aboard out of the cold. It's Auter, not Otter. And who might you be, sir? Who might I be? Why, my beautiful one, for indeed, let us not mince words. You are beautiful, very beautiful. My name, dear, is Cyrano Jones.
the Iran syndicate must have pursued him right across the quadrant. Mr. Jones advises that he and his crew had an altercation with the Orions while caught thieving from a Dr. Ryan freighter at Outpost 18. If this Jones is the person I believe him to be, then there is more to this than meets the eye. <coughs> On me. Answer. I have the data you requested, sir. Sit down, Mr. Cassass. What have you got? Well, we have all reason to believe that this Cyrano Jones is none other than the one with whom Starfleet, specifically Admiral Kirk, has had two documented encounters. As I suspected. According to the database, one took place on Stardate 4523.3. The Enterprise was called to Deep Space Station K-7 by a Priority One distress call. The station is located near Sherman's planet, which was disputed between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. I smell politics... Again. Jones's inadvertent smuggling of Tribbles aboard the Enterprise alerted the late Captain Spock to a Klingon plot to poison the grain. However, his good intentions were inadvertent. It looks like we have a tricky character on our hands. Think you can handle him, Stephanie? Oh, I don't see any problems. We'll finish securing the area and then report back. Agreed. Esteban, out. I'm a bit worried, sir. So am I. I'd like you to continue to look into Jones and any records of his recent activity. I'll get right to it. And liaise with Thorson. Get him to interview the freighter's crew for any discrepancies in their stories. Childers, get me Admiral Morrow at Starfleet Command. Scramble the signal and encode the frequency. Hailing the headquarters now, sir. Jonathan? Admiral. I heard of your altercation with the Orions. I'm not happy about this at all. Neither am I. Apart from the fact that it's another delay, Orion activity in this area of space is limited. This isn't their usual patch, so to speak. I concur. Also, the captain of the freighter which was chased down is Serrano Jones. I see. Sherman's planet. Exactly. You better watch him and his crew carefully. Grand Admiral Turner has called the Enterprise to return home for decommissioning, but the USS Tempest is still in your area. I'll have her assigned to this case. Hold position until Captain Fraser arrives. Understood. Morrow out. Celesta, get me Admiral McKnight, please. Alex. How are things at the top? Chaotic at best. To what do I owe this pleasure? It's about the Grissom. Grand Admiral Turner won't let me send any starship to support her. Do you know a ship ready to launch and looking for a mission? You're talking to Reynolds, Harry. Why not ask Admiral Stonebridge for something like that? Stonebridge? I believe he's currently overseeing ship construction at Copernicus Yards. That's right. And from what he's told me, the USS Hathaway's in space dock in lunar orbit now. Birthed off the yards, but should shortly be ready to launch. Interesting. Jeffrey Pierce is her commanding officer. He can be trusted with the Genesis information, I think. Careful, Alex. This is not a subject I'd like to talk about right now. I see. However, if we can't send another ship to Genesis directly... Alex! ...to assist the Grissom, of course, then we can maybe put one somewhere in the vicinity. I believe, for example, that Dr. Carol Marcus at Space Station Regular One could require assistance at the moment. Oh, I'm sure she does. Can you talk to Stone Ridge then? Sure. I believe the Hathaway should shortly be in position to assist her. Shall I prepare Jeff Pierce for that? Get Stone Ridge to do this, since the Hathaway and Captain Pierce technically fall under his command. Once Pierce has arrived at Regular One, I will give him Alpha Level Clearance myself. Fine. I guess I had to keep this one quiet. That would be wise indeed. Thanks, Alex.
Well, Mr. Jones, as you can see, my crew have everything in order. We should be able to get your ship spaceworthy soon enough. My dear lady, my dear, dear lady Otter, you are all simply wonderful, just wonderful. If you hadn't chanced along, who knows what might have happened? It's a tear. O-T-T-A-I-R. I bear no relation to a small, furry, aquatic earth mammal. Ah, but like the otter, you are such a thing of beauty. Lithe, graceful, and appealing to the eye. Enough of that humor. Can you explain to me again, why was the Orion privateer chasing you and your crew? Well, my crew and I... Uh... Purloin some brandy stocks from an Orion vessel docked near to us at Outpost 18. And they really overacted quite terribly. You mean you stole their Orion brandy, don't you? That seems to be reason enough for them to chase you. They don't take kindly to being cheated. But Lady Otter, pardon me, Otter, they had such a surfeit of it in their hold. But it seemed we were almost doing them a favor to take it off their hands. Ah, Commander. Isn't the cold just magnificent? I'm really finding this a most pleasant diversion. Bloody freezing I am. Commander, I was scouting the interior of the ship when I came across several crates of these in the cargo bay. What is it, Thor? Well, it's a triple, sir. Jones. But of course it is, Commander. In fact, there's a dozen of them aboard. Ah, uh, uh, they are neutered. Oh, really? Duchess Arad? Mr. Jones is right. The cell structure of this creature seems to be incapable of division. As he said, neutered. It seems to be completely harmless. Oh, sweet thing. Whatever. Mr. Jones, Miss Colgan, can you tell us where you intend to head for once the repairs to your vessel are complete? We'll set course to Pacifica again. But how long do you think the repairs will take, my dear commander? Thor? Nine hours, maybe twelve. McLaughlin and my men are working hard on it. Perfect. I have never had the opportunity to board a starship before. And I'm wondering, couldn't you give us a tour of your ship? Sorry, miss, but the only reason to be aboard Grissom would be in the case of requiring medical intervention at this stage. And no one of the crew is seriously injured. I'm afraid the captain is most exact on this matter. As a matter of fact, I don't think all of us are needed here anymore. Doctor? Chatman? I'd say you could beam up again and get your reports together. Very well, then. Thank you, Commander. I just... It, it's... Yes, Chatman? I'd like to ask if there's any possibility to... Ah, forget it. You like that little creature, Chapman, don't you? It's just... I know someone that could really use something to cheer him up, and... Well... But of course, my boy. If this is what we can do for you, then we shall get you one from the crates. Can I? I have no objections, Chapman. Thank you. I hope it will raise Aben's mood while he's still bound to sick pay. Colgan, go and get the boy one. With pleasure, Captain. So that's it then. Prepare to return to the Grissom. So, the mission is proceeding according to plan, Ash. Not long now, and the mysterious Genesis data will be ours. Do not call me by that human nomenclature, Severa. You know how I hate it. Our Romulan blood should not be tainted, so... Well then, Sugar, do you not think it sickens me to taint my family name with this human one? Enough of that. So when are we going to board the Grissom? Do they suspect anything? No. But to get aboard, we will have to alter the plan slightly. In what way? My brave Sukar, it looks like you're going to have a little... accident.
Well, as we are all here, can we at last begin? Sure, Libby. Hurry up with the brandy. Typical. Really, Saunders, your smoking of cigars is bad enough. But must you do that when we are meeting? I find your lack of manners most annoying. Relax, Libby. Besides, I don't see enough smoke inside. Starfleet Command regulations do not stipulate no smoking signs, because in the 23rd century, most humans are enlightened enough to know the dangers of smoking, Dr. Saunders. Clive, please, do me a favor and stub the cigar or we'll never get started. <sighs> okay, David. On this occasion. The effect from the premature detonation of the Genesis torpedo resulted, as you know, in large parts of the Matara Nebula disappearing. However, some of the nebulae remained, and much of it was integrated into the structure of the new Genesis planet. While aboard the Enterprise, we saw the planet forming, and indeed initial scans indicate it's tectonically stable and perfectly formed. It was a most fascinating sight, as these things go. What I would like to know is how you and your mother stabilized the Matrix. It was unstable last I heard, and yet, voila, here is Genesis, complete. I'm interested in hearing how you did that myself, David. You might elaborate. I've told you before, let's just concentrate on the planet itself. I can fill you in on all the details of the actual project later. I mean, the data is freely available to you from my records. I have thoroughly perused your data over the last two days and still find gaps in your equations which are, to be frank, puzzling. Look, Libby, of course there are gaps. There would be to any one of your limited knowledge. Let's just get on with planning our planetary scan. We can sort the data together. Later. As you wish, Saunders. Perhaps later we can get to the bottom of this mystery together. Let's go through the schedule Commander Chapman and I put together a while ago and see how it fits to your and Tavik's point of view. Scheduled? Sure. Are you all right, David? Your hands are wet. There's nothing else for me to do here. vertebrae, but amazingly no other injuries. The rupture will be simple to treat, but not here. I'll need to get him to sick bay. Can you get up? I don't know. Slowly, mister. Oh, tell me, is there no trace of blood at the site of the fall? You can tell a lot about a man by the color of his blood. Captain Jones, I need to talk to you immediately. <laughs> of course, Colgan. Just coming, just coming. What you're up to, Jones. The Tal Shiar has been following your smuggling of Romulan ale for years. Be aware, failure to carry out your part of the deal will mean spending a very long time in the mind of Remus. I will take great pleasure in delivering you there personally. Serverless! I mean, Colgan! I did nothing wrong! I was merely talking to Commander Otter, putting her mind at ease. Liar! I heard your taunts of blood. But enough! Remember, I am watching you. And don't forget, the warbird Karzan is cloaked in system, as well as our captured decoy privateer. So no attempt to flee will succeed. What do you need me to do, my dear servants? Ash is aboard Grissom now. He requires a distraction to get to the computer core. Since that Chapman boy asked for a trouble for someone in Grissom Sickbay, I dared to give him one from your personal collection. You gave him one of the non neutered ones? From the special containment hall? Yes. A sick bay overrun with tribbles will provide ample distraction for Ash to act. But those creatures will multiply and may cause damage to their beautiful ship. 
Oh, Jones, as if I would care. Ah, Commander. Evening. How was our patient? Well, Dr. Saraz carried out non-invasive laser surgery and fixed the rupture in no time. So he's just resting up before he goes back down to the surface. Nothing major. That's good. I might just pop into your ICU and see Aben then since I'm here. I won't take long. For Jesus' sake. Will you go see the poor lad and stop foostering around out here? Lieutenant Commander, you have come to see me? Of course I have, Aben. Nothing could keep me away. Sir, you shouldn't say such things to make me feel better. It is cruel. But thank you. Thanks for your visit. Don't talk rubbish. Sir, I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I am overwhelmed. Come now, Aben. Don't you think it's time you called me Christopher? Christopher. See? But you should let go of my hand now. <laughs> I don't wish to overwhelm you, too. Uh-huh. Yes. Really. But what's that under your jacket? Just something. Something I brought for you. <laughs> the treble. Captain to Lieutenant Commander Chapman. Oh, damn. Chapman here. I almost thought you had entirely disappeared. Get yourself back on duty ASAP. Aye, sir. Sorry I have to go. It's okay. I'll be back as soon as I can. Wood, what's wrong with Sorry, you? Chapman. I mean, Lieutenant Commander. Just that visitor. And what happened to him? He's injured. Why are you asking? I was... In thoughts, apparently. Ah, Wood. Constantly missing your physicals, I see. But you really need to be here now. Can't you come back another time? Of course, Murphy. I'll, uh, I'd better go then. I'd be getting back to you about that physical. Yeah, sure. Slowly there, Ensign. Casas. That's Lieutenant Casas, Ensign. Have you seen our patient from the Persephone? Commander Otaire seems to think he needs watching. He does. By the way, it's good to meet you. We really need to talk, you and I, but not here. What do you mean? I'm sure you know very well what I mean. I'm intrigued. I hoped you would be. Did I ever tell you that I have a very soft spot for you? Let's get in. The storage room? Quick. Oh, well then. Nurse Murphy! What's up, young man? Need any help? You'd better come in here. We have a problem. Well, if you need to, what the fuck? I haven't done anything. It's not my fault. It just began to multiply. Ah, finally. It's just as simple as I predicted. Wow, that was special. 
I always wanted to do that with you, or to you. We have to do that again sometime. Oh yes, but let's get back on duty before someone notices us together. I have to go to sick bay and watch our injured visitor. Oh fine, I will join you. Didn't you just come out of there when we met? What the hell? Murphy? Are you there? Jesus, it looks like the shit's really hit the fan. Yes sir, sir. We have to get out of here, all of us. I'll contact the captain and we'll seal off sick bay. Understood. Where is our visitor? He's right over there. Wait, he's gone. Shit. What? Casas to Esteban. Captain, please respond. Esteban here. We better go to yellow alert. The patient has left sick bay, so I guess we have an intruder on board. Since we are here, my dear, I thought we might as well take some of that Orion brandy I had, uh, <laughs> acquired. Thank you, Captain Jones. That would be pleasant. So tell me, what exactly is going on here? Your ship made a remarkably smooth landing, considering the damage it took from the Orions. All down to the wonderful Sharon Colgan, a most talented first mate and pilot. Ah, yes. Sharon, never far from your side, but you seem almost afraid of her. <laughs> I'm afraid of my own shadow, Commander. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Fighter? Esteban to Otea, report. Otea here. Commander, we have an intruder on board, and a triple situation here. What? Sick bay and most of the surrounding deck had to be closed, and we're on yellow alert. Get me Jones and his first mate right here in my ready room, immediately. Of course, Captain. I mean pronto. Esteban, out. I don't understand this. Neither do I. But I think somebody has got a lot of explaining to do. Commander Pollock, I can confirm that I have received a signal from Servalis. Agent Sukar is aboard the Grissom and following the Tribble plan. She herself has been taken aboard now with Jones. Good. Very good. I will command the warbird Karzan to proceed to the orbit of KwaZulu-8 and beam our Tal Shiar agents out. Shall I order to leave the far side of the planet's orbit? Indeed. Time for you to destroy the Persephone to make Starfleet point the finger at the villainous Orions. Yes, sir. At once. Jones, we know you're the source of the triples, but how exactly you got a non to aboard my ship is beyond me. You will explain yourself now, before I have you thrown in my brig. Captain Esteban, my dear man, it is a mistake. I have only a little experience with triples, you see. One must have been unneutered, hence this problem. Casas to Esteban, we have beamed the triples to the cargo bay on deck three, erected a level two force field, and flooded the chamber with anesthetic gas. According to Dr. Saraz, the troubles are dormant for now. Well done, Cassas. Any news about the intruder? Negative, sir. I have security teams sweeping the ship as we speak. We have to speed this up. Lawson? Sir? Get your own men and join Cassas. I want this ash found before he can do any harm. Aye, sir. And now, Mr. Jones, I'm waiting. What the hell is this all about? I'm on my way back to the bridge, Clive. 
perhaps wait for the next car. Ah, nonsense. Bridge. Clive. Hey, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> Clive, what are you doing? This. I want you, Becky. No, I know you want me too. Ah, Lieutenant Sato. Good. Status, Mr. Jada. Captain on the bridge. The Orion Privateer has re-entered the system and is about to enter a low orbit of Quasilu 8. Just in time. This is all too fishy by far. Childers, have the transporter room beam up all of the Persephone's crew from the surface and our own teams. Have Thorson assign a team to escort her crew directly to the brig. Aye. Sato, plot a course to put us on the other side of the planet. Maximum impulse. Aye, sir. Are we running away, sir? They wouldn't be coming back unless they knew they could outgun us. They must have something up their sleeves. Trust me, son, things aren't always as they appear. That's for sure. I'm not even going to ask what you're doing on my bridge, Saunders. Approaching the far side of Quazulu 8, opposed by 180 degrees to the freighter's crash site. Childers, as soon as we're out of any jamming range, I want you to contact Starfleet Command and advise them of our situation. Encrypted message, Captain. No, not this time. Use a regular subspace channel, or even better, use several. Whoever is able to listen, I want them to know exactly what we're up to. Phasers on stun. Lewinsky, you're with me. Clinton, you go the other way. Get back via comm once the deck is secured. Aye, sir. At last. Now, which terminal is the right one? Me the data. <laughs> so here you are. I'm afraid, human. You have just made a fatal mistake. I don't think so. Tell me your name, female, so I may at least know the face of the enemy. My name is, at least at the moment, Ensign Rachel Wood, but I'm known as the Hand of God. However, I think you will find I can be a great many things. I'm very sorry. I have to kill you. You fool. You're already dead. No! 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 As I told you, Romulan beggar. The Klingons will never let you get your hands on that Federation weapon first. Not as long as I will be here to secure it. Captain, I need to return to the surface, Commander Otair. Why are we moving? I really have had quite enough of all this Severalis. I think I'll throw my lot in with Starfleet on this occasion. I'm sorry, but did you just call her by a Romulan name? Romulan's on my ship? <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> oh. 
Let me help you up, Stephanie. I simply could not bear to think of anything untoward happening to you. I tear here. It's Romulans, Captain. The first mate was a Romulan. This just gets better. I'll have security with you immediately. Please. Please sit, Commander. I sincerely like you, and sincerely offer my apologies for any personal hurt you may have suffered. Give me some water, Mr. Jones. Stephanie, are you alright? Don't worry about me. Look out. She's conscious. Thorson. Her pulse has stopped. Cyanide, I suppose. Alright. Then take her to sick bay. Immediately. I think it's too late. She's dead. She definitely poisoned herself. Potassium cyanide, or a Romulan equivalent anyway, on a strong dose. Capsule in one of her teeth. Ah, Mr. Murphy, right? How are you now? What are you doing here? Have I seen you before? I believe a Romulan plot has just been uncovered by Commander Atair? Yes, but... Fantastic. Just as I imagined. If you get a security team to check the computer core on the upper level, you will find something related to this. S sorry, sorry, Anson. What, what was your name again? How do you know this? And who are you? An observer. Simply an observer, Nurse Murphy. I'm so sorry I can do no more to help. What comes next is preordained. Wait. Goodbye. For now. Then just hold on here a minute. And... Commander Pardek, Biodata has ceased on both Agent Severalis and Agent Sukar. This is most unfortunate. Starfleet now undoubtedly knows of our involvement. The subterfuge of this pretense of being Orion's is now useless. But with Carson and the ship, we can still overpower the Starfleet vessel and take the required data. And risk a diplomatic incident. Officially, even if we are not at peace with the Federation, we are not yet at war with them either. With the Nimbus 3 project, we already are knee-deep in showing the hand of friendship to them. Nimbus 3 is nothing but a hoax. Nimbus 3 is an experiment, and we are under orders not to jeopardize it. We must slink back home like domesticated Setlef and take whatever punishment the Senate sees fit to deliver. Is there no other way? Come, Sub-Commander Maori. We are not Klingons with their warped sense of honor. We live to fight another day. So, Jones was an unwilling operative of the Romulans after all. Yes, sir. From what we have ascertained using Dr. Siraz to monitor his vital signs, he wasn't lying. For the last few years, Jones had been smuggling a Romulan ale across the border and was arrested with the threat of a lengthy sentence in the Dilithium mines on Remus. But the Romulans gave him a possible out, helped them out with a little intelligence gathering, and the charges would be dropped. If he hadn't cooperated, he and his crew would have been killed. And Commander Otea assures me he did try to warn her on several occasions. But what about the Romulan called Ash that Murphy told you would be in the computer core? How the hell did Murphy know about him? I don't know, sir. But the Romulan had been slaughtered by hand, not by a weapon of any sort. Dr. Saraz is currently conducting an autopsy of his body. And who brought that triple aboard? <sighs> it was Chapman, sir. But it was assumed that the exemplar Savralis had given him was neutered. Chapman, I should have known. You're dismissed. Thor? Yes, sir? Can I have a moment? Of course. Murphy knowing about the agent in the computer call and this mysterious Ensign story makes no sense. I want you to question him about this personally. As you wish. Am I permitted to detain him for the questioning? You are. Thank you. 
Sir Jones, given you were threatened by the Romulans and that no Starfleet personnel were injured, the captain has agreed to let you go. I heard from your Lieutenant Cassus that you put in a good word for me, so to speak. Well, yes, I did explain the particular extenuating circumstances. Thank you. You're welcome. Since the Romulans and Klingons both now have warrants out for your detention, where will you go? Where the winds may take me. I have a ship full of tribbles now, thanks to your captain. I guess you're in good company then. I owe you, Commander Oter. Perhaps next time you stop off at Starbase 67, we may meet there. I often pass through. Well, there's a little place called Hunter's Moon I've heard of. So, it's a date? Maybe. Ensign Wood, energize. That talk never happened, Tenson. Do I make myself clear? Absolutely, Commander. I can't believe this, Doctor. Are you sure of this? I can confirm that Delton refugees from Sonera Base made it as far as Regula 1. Sonera Base was entirely destroyed in a mysterious explosion. Few escaped. I've left a message for Starfleet Commander Morrow to contact me. He was in a meeting with Grand Admiral Turner. Thank you, Dr. Marcus, for bringing this to my attention. I will, of course, get you further information from Morrow as soon as Starfleet arrives on the scene of the explosion. Thank you. I presume you want to talk to your son now. I'll have Childers patch you through. Yes. I need to liaise with his team. Please keep me posted if you hear anything further from Sonera. Excuse me, Dr. Marcus. Childers, can you forward this call to David Marcus? Yes, sir. Transferring now. Yes, enter. Jonathan, I went to start my autopsy on the Romulans, but I find my sickbay is bereft of its chief nurse. Why is Thorson questioning him? How dare you do this to one of my staff without consulting me first? Calm down, Vindy. Calm down. It's a matter of security. Security? I don't give a damn about security. Murphy is a loyal member of this crew, and I want him released now. Vindy, this is ship's business. You will not speak to your captain in that tone, or I will suspend you from duty. Is that understood? Oh, I understand, Captain. I understand perfectly. Now, when will my chief nurse be released? As soon as Mr. Thorson has finished questioning him, If you had bothered to check with me before storming up here, I could have told you this. If this is a business meeting, Captain, then I might point out that next time you target sickbay staff, you go through your CMO. (laughs) Enter. Captain, you wanted to see me? Yes, Chapman. Sit down. I learned you brought that triple on board. Yes, sir. Apologies. It was supposed to be neutered, but, but and I couldn't know that... Enough. I know that Dr. Saraz grants you permission to bring that creature aboard, but that's not the point. Sir? That freighter's crash site was not meant as a shore leave, Chapman. You're again mixing work with matters entirely personal, and I don't like to see it affecting your duties. I can assure you it's not. Your behavior since Starbase 67 has been abysmal. Your work is shoddy, and your attitude is, quite frankly, appalling. For the moment, I am relieving you of your duties associated with Lieutenant Commander. You are hereby demoted to Lieutenant. I see. Junior grade. I'll talk to Commander Oter about a role for you on Grissom, if indeed there is one. You are to report to your quarters and stay there until we decide what to do with you. But, sir... You're dismissed. (sighs) Damn. Can this get any worse tonight? Enter. Lieutenant Sato. Sir, I I was wondering if I might have a moment of your time. It's kind of important. Isn't everything, Rebecca? I really hope this isn't more bad news. No, sir. (laughs) At least I don't think so. And? Sir, I'm pregnant, sir. (laughs) Why, Lieutenant, that's... that's simply wonderful.
Indeed we have, my lady. But it is a waste of time, for there is nothing out there. Is it time? Time for what? I tired of your constant rhetoric and games, and I tire of you. Do not seek to order my warriors. I will decloak this vessel only at a time of my choosing. Commander, there's another bird of prey here. We're hailed. <laughs> then decloak now. Answer the hail. Coming on screen. Crew. Ah, Valkyries, Beauty, and Restark, my old comrade in arms. I bring you good news. It is good to see you, crew. With you working for us, the new Federation weapon will be ours. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I will not be working for you, but you will be working for me. What? But General Card gave this mission to me. Silence, Restrack. Commander Krug has been made mission commander for the entire Genesis weapon program. The High Council has removed General Karg. Removed General Karg? Permanently. Karg's progress was found to be lacking. But no matter, if you care for his well-being, you can pray to his soul in Stobokor. Success, my lord. So now, Krug, as to business, can we return to capturing my treacherous agent? Emperor Song? Yes, without delay. But first, the Arrestak is the tracking beacon implanted in the hand of God. This Camuloid agent still broadcasting. Confirm, sir. We know exactly where the starship Grissom will be at any given time. Excellent. Valkyris, you know the location of this Emperor Song? I believe so. There is a smuggler named Gale Mahali. You only know where they are. Then, here is how we will proceed. You will accompany Restark and find this Vago Mali, secure Mpur Sog, and retrieve the Genesis data for me. My own bird of prey will pursue the Grissom's course at a distance until you bring me the data. Do not fail me, either of you. Kapla, Krug. Listening to Star Trek Grissom, Episode 4, featuring Clive Saunders as Captain Jonathan T. Esteban, Dallas Teague Snyder as Dr. Vindy Saras, Jennifer Cole as Commander Stephanie Otter. Also starring David Robertson as Lieutenant Commander Christopher Chatman, Benjamin Cavesdale as Specialist Eben, Gronje Ahern as Lieutenant Rebecca Sato, Will Dees as Dr. Clive Saunders, Hannah Klang as Ensign Rachel Wood, Anya Nikolain as Ensign Kara McLachlan, Rick Pike as Lieutenant Lars Thorson, Michael Slagenwhite Kaufman as Lieutenant Juan Casas, Sean P. Teeling as Nurse Sean Murphy, Bodo Hartwig as Lieutenant Brian Childers, William Raymer as Petty Officer Bakari Jata, and Andrew Foster as Admiral Harry Morrow, with Michael Liebman as Dr. Michael Liebman, Dave McAvoy as David Marcus, Renda Carr as Lieutenant Savick, and Ronan Byrne as Cadet Q. Special appearances by Keith Harris as Admiral Alexander McKnight, Melissa D. Wilson as Dr. Carol Marcus, Shadow McNamara Teeling as Muggle, Toby Slagenwhite Kaufman as Commander Reshtak, Ronan Byrne as Klingon Navigator, Scott Fack as Romulan Commander Pardek, Dave McAvoy as Romulan Subcommander Mori, Charles Miller as Ash Sakar, Lucy Farrier Cook as Colgan Severalis, and Nick Cook as Cyrano Jones, with Barbara Puda as Lady Valkyris and introducing Carl Puda as Commander Krug. Story by Nick Cook, Jean-Paul Teeling and Bodo Hartwig. 
Audio play by Bodo Hartwig and Sean Paul Thieling. Editing sound effects and music by Bodo Hartwig. For further information, visit www.startrekgrissom.net. Thank you.